It's been one month since Haiti's prime minister announced his resignation during violent unrest. Reports say a temporary government is ready to take over. The new administration's main task will be to pave the way for new presidential elections within two years and to rein in Haiti's rampant gang violence. The sound of everyday life in Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince. Despite some police presence, gang fighting continues. Meanwhile, ordinary Haitians go about their business in their daily struggle just to get by. There's gunfire all around, but I still have to look after myself. If you make it home from work alive, it's thanks to God. The insecurity is increasingly forcing aid organizations and hospitals to suspend their vital work. Adding to the difficulties, the country's main airport remains closed. Haiti is the most populous nation in the Caribbean and has been plagued by violence for years. Gangs are still thought to control some 80 percent of the capital, Port-au-Prince. One of the root problems? Grinding poverty. Haiti is one of the Western Hemisphere's poorest nations, with 60 percent of the population earning less than $2 a day. Many hope whoever eventually comes to power in Haiti will tackle the economic hardship fueling crime. My message is that they need to see this for what it is. The government has to see the gangs as the aggressors, but also as the result of people's misery. It's social injustice that has caused all of this. People in government need to understand that we young people need jobs to keep us from turning to other things. While Haiti's political future hangs in the balance, lawlessness remains a fact of everyday life. Restoring some degree of stability will be the first order of business for the next government and a precondition for economic development. Let's go to Sophie Rutenbar. She's an international affairs fellow at the New York University Center on International Cooperation and a former UN officer in Haiti. Uh, Sophie, what do you make of the plans for this transitional council? Yeah, so as you mentioned, it's been about a month since both um, uh, Prime Minister Henri offered his resignation um, once a transitional body was in place and since the agreement was um, made to create that um, transitional body. It was facilitated by CARICOM, which is the Caribbean um, sort of regional organization, um, and uh, in communication with a bunch of different um, political groups and civil society groups. Um, and um, the, as you mentioned, the um, Transitional Council is very close to being officially appointed. They've spent the last kind of two or three weeks um, having debates about sort of internal um, composition, having debates about sort of what their um, uh, rules of um, basically uh, procedures should be. Um, and a political accord was concluded over the weekend, last weekend, and sent to the current government which basically now has to approve it and sort of officially promulgate it. And with that, um, we expect that Prime Minister Henri will resign and that this um, transitional council will be sworn in and we'll be able to kind of move forward in um, hopefully sort of beginning to reestablish the state and beginning to reestablish mm -hmm. control. Now, people say this whole crisis is all about poverty, but what does neighboring uh, Dominican Republic do better than Haiti, for example? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think it should be pointed out that Dominican Republic and Haiti have um, a long shared history. They obviously occupy two sides of the same island. Um, but there are key differences that people have to remember when you're comparing um, the two countries. One is that um, both countries had dictatorships. Um, the Dominican Republic dictatorship under Trujillo ended quite a bit earlier in 1961, whereas the Haiti's dictatorship only ended in 1986. Um, and so um, the Dominican Republic has had a bit more time to um, uh, sort of reestablish itself and, and move forward as a democracy. So I think we shouldn't discount that. Um, and there are also kind of some other sort of things that look similar but actually are quite different. For example, they're on the same island, but 
Haiti actually receives quite a bit less rainfall than Dominican Republic. So I think there's a lot of talk about kind of deforestation on the Haitian side of the island. Um, yes, that's an outgrowth of poverty, but at the same time, it's sort of, they also don't have quite the same sort of favorable con conditions that Dominicans do. So it's a complicated thing, but um, I think looking at Dominican Republic does offer hope for sort of what Haiti um, might move towards in the future. Now, uh, let's talk about the gangs that are terrorizing uh, people there in Haiti. What can be done to tackle that violence? Well, first we need a government in place, and then we need sort of um, security support. The Haitian National Police is um, has really been demoralized, has really been sort of cut down. Um, you really haven't even necessarily seen them on the streets recently. Um, and the gangs really do have control of large portions of the city. So I think there has been discussion about some sort of international intervention um, that um, is sort of on the back burner right now while this transitional kind of uh, council gets put in place. But um, it's difficult to imagine that the Haitian National Police could sort of provide protection um, for Haitians without sort of additional support kind of at their current depleted level. Um, so, and once you have a government, once you sort of have um, the security institutions being rebuilt, in the longer term, you need development to address those issues of poverty, as you mentioned. Thank you very much, Sophie Rutenbach from New York University Center on International Cooperation.